This is 1950 Roosevelt dime in PR68 cameo condition. According to NGC, proof coins were offered in 1950 for the first time since being interrupted by World War II in 1942. An eight-year suspension in the coining of proofs meant that the Philadelphia Mint had to relearn the process before perfecting it. As a consequence, this first emission of proof Roosevelt dimes included many coins that were only semi-brilliant. Those struck from dies that were more fully polished may sometimes show a lack of low-relief details, as these were abraded from the dies, but this is not a big issue with 1950 proof dimes. Gems of this issue have been certified in good numbers through PF67, but examples displaying enough contrast on both sides to be certified as cameo are very scarce and highly sought. This one was sold for $516 on September 5, 2023. Number 14. Here is proof 1938 Walking Liberty half dollar in PR67 condition. With weight of 12.50 grams and metal composition of 90% silver and 10% copper. 1938 saw some 8,152 proof Walking Liberty half struck. As with all Walking Liberty half dollar proofs, most have little to no cameo contrast, especially on the sun. This PR67 specimen was sold for $1,380 on September 5, 2023. Number 13. Here is 1978 Kennedy half dollar in MS67 plus condition. The mintage for the 1978 Kennedy half dollar was relatively low. This coin has a grade of MS67 plus, which is one of the highest grades that a coin can be given. This means that the coin has virtually no flaws and is in excellent condition. If you have a pristine, uncirculated 1978 Kennedy half dollar, you should consider having graded by a professional coin grading service. This will help you to determine its exact value and market condition. This one was bargained for $3,125.25 with buyer's fee. Number 12. This is 1956 D. Jefferson Nickel in MS66 plus condition with full steps. The central steps definition is excellent, and this single characteristic distinguishes the current coin within a plethora of certified 1956 D. Nickels. Full steps coins are universally scarce, and they are rare at the premium gem level. This piece displays satiny lilac gray and bluish luster with few contact marks. It ended up selling for $2,640. Number 11. Here is 1960 Washington Quarter in MS67 plus condition. According to Heritage, this is a condition census example of the 1960 Washington Quarter, being tied with four other plus graded superb gems for the second finest at PCGS. Expectedly satiny luster characterizes each side, with lemon gold border toning and a few russet flecks. The strike is sharp, and neither side exhibits bothersome abrasions. It ended up selling $3,000. Number 10. This is 1941 Jefferson Nickel in PR68 condition. Wheat gold toning enriches this unabraded and well-struck proof Jefferson Nickel. Essentially flawless save for a small carbon fleck above the west wing of Monticello. The quality is surpassed by only a solitary PR68 plus specimen. From a low proof emission of 18,720 pieces. It was sold for $3,840. Number 9. This is 1971 Washington Quarter in MS67 condition. The satiny surfaces are pristine, complementing sharp design elements and attractive original toning. Amber russet toning in the margin seeds to ribbons of crimson and forest green, leaving the interiors iridescent. Eye appeal is stunning for the issue. It was sold for $3,600. Number 8. Here is 1930 D. Lincoln sent in MS66 plus red condition. CAC proven superb gem. The 1930 D. Lincoln sent is one of the scarcer issues in gem uncirculated grades from the 1930s. For the most part, 1930 to 1934 D. Lincoln sents are scarce in MS66 condition and higher and more so than the dates after 1934. This elusive specimen fetched a sum of $3,840 on September 5, 2023. Number 7. This is 1943 S Steel Penny in MS68 condition. Comes with incredible pastel toning. According to Heritage, the 1943 S Lincoln Steel Scent is scarce in MS68, the finest numeric rate available to collectors. 
This glittering example displays impressive sharpness and pristine surfaces. Unlike most examples, which are brilliant white in appearance, this coin displays beautiful, delicate sky blue and pale lilac hues across the untouched zinc coated steel surfaces. It was sold for $3,120. Number 6. Here is 1925 cent in MS65 red and brown condition. According to NGC, despite a fairly substantial mintage, 1925 s cents of desirable quality are quite scarce. Worn examples are quite common from widespread hoarding during the 1930s 50s, and mint state pieces of so so quality are likewise available. Fully red gems are very rare and tend to be much darker in shade than Philadelphia mint cents. This issue is perhaps not quite as hard to find with a decent strike as its Denver Mint cousin, but the typical 1925 S scent is mushy on one or both sides. The dyes were used way too long and may have been improperly hardened, as well, but the result was coins having blurry and grossly distorted features. This elusive specimen was bargained for $4,920. Number 5. This is 1932 Washington Quarter in MS67 condition. The first year Philadelphia issue in the Washington Quarter series is plentiful overall but scarce in high grade. Blended sun gold, red, pine green, and russet toning appear across each side. The strike is sharp, and no major abrasions are seen. It was sold for $5,520. Number 4. This is 1937 Washington Quarter in MS67 condition. Delicate iridescent toning graces the otherwise brilliant. Frosty surfaces of this superb gem 1937s Washington Quarter. The strike is sharp, and neither side has notable abrasions. Although plentiful in lower grades, the 1937s is scarce in MS67, and CAC approved pieces in this grade are rare. It ended up selling for $6,001.20. Number 3. Here is attractively toned 1946s quarter dollar. This dazzling MS-68 example of an early post-war San Francisco issue combines high technical grade and eye-appealing charm. Delicately frosted high points give way to rolling cartwheel luster through the fields. Blue to gray overtones dominate the interiors, while the margins show gold to reddish-orange patina, those hues covering more of the reverse. A minuscule curving scrape to the left of the eagle's beak is one of the few post-striking faults visible to the unaided eye, and that only with searching. It ended up selling for $11,400. Number 2. This is 1915 D. Lincoln Cent in MS67 condition. According to Heritage, full red examples of the 1915 D. Lincoln Cent are often available in grades through MS65, but MS66 pieces are scarce, and only a handful of finer pieces are known. This superb gem red coin is within the condition census. Well struck devices complement copper red. Satiny mint luster with no distracting spots. It was sold for $48,000. Number 1. And this is 2000 piece Akajawea dollar mule with a statehood quarter. Extremely rare error coin in mint state 67. A gorgeous specimen of this incredible rarity showcasing golden tan surfaces with areas of richer honey coloration throughout. The overall pristine surfaces are complemented by satiny, cartwheeling luster and bold definition to the design elements. Dye striations at the border are seen on all known examples, creating a spectacular sunburst effect most dramatic on the obverse. According to Stax Powers, mules, coins struck using two dyes intended for two different coins, have long been a holy grail of error coins for generations. In most cases, Mules are intentionally produced using deliberate pairings of entirely unrelated dyes purely for the purpose of creating numismatic delicacies in very small quantities intended for highly specialized collections. Such fanciful creations are familiar in many numismatic disciplines and such items may be found in a bewildering array of combinations and metals. This one was sold for $192,000. Thanks for watching this video. Consider subscribing to our channel for more captivating numismatic content. Have a good one.